Oh no, here he goes again. Here's that vintage electronics geek doofus, with another story that sure will delight you. Hello everybody, and welcome to this edition of What Did Jack Buy? I don't know, you tell me. Anyway, this is going to be a quick review of this IC tool. It's a Ow Bow, I guess that's how you pronounce it, model number WJ368. It is a IC puller. For those that have worked on devices that required or that had IC chips in them and required for you to pluck them out for one dumb reason or another, you've probably used your golden screwdriver as such. And yes, it does work. You can get in there. Screwdriver does work. However, with that, when you do pull the IC chip up, the front half of the legs are just fine. The rear half of the legs, however, are all bent. And so then you have to spend the next few minutes trying to fix the legs, get them straight, and get them put back in. And that's what I've done. So I've decided to, let's go ahead and get the proper tool for the job. And there are several different types of IC pullers on the market that could be had. Wasn't really sure exactly what model it was I needed, I wanted seen several from dirt cheap to rather expensive. Well, I didn't really want dirt cheap, although it probably would have worked. And the expensive one for me did not make sense, especially since this is a hobby and not a career. I decided to go with this style, and I'm pretty glad at this point that I did. The construction of this is not bad. The casing, I believe this material is nylon. It's a really soft, squishy, kind of plastic but yet it's it's pretty strong pretty durable the inside or the main part of the puller is I believe that to be aluminum or some kind of metal with chrome plating weight wise it's pretty light but yet the build quality is pretty good I think it should last you quite a while I see size you can pick up from about that which is I don't know cheap gas half an inch all the way about as big as your monitor. So yes, this could pick up your monitor. Oh, I'm goofing. That's probably about a five inch gap. You're probably not going to grab anything five inches, but I'd say three to four inches you could probably do comfortably. First couple of times I I used this tool, I'd grab onto the IC and then I yanked it out like there was no tomorrow. And by doing that, that sent these ICs and the tool flying. The tool ended up all Cattywonkus and goofy, but it didn't sustain any issues. It, it was pretty pliable and came back. One nice thing about this tool, when you smash down, it has this little lock right here on both sides. I believe the camera could pick that up. And so when you're smashing down, that little lock stops the tool from sliding, at least to, to this direction. And it does a pretty good job. The tool is really easy to use. And again, it sure does beat using a screwdriver trying to get into an area that you really can't get into and causing issues to the board or the chip itself. So I'm going to try to do this without getting my big hands or arms in the way. It's real easy to pull the chip out. You just need to ensure you have these little locks up underneath the chip. In this application here, these chips are in IC sockets. Now, I bought this exclusively because I needed the tool but because I was working on this project mainly. This is a, um, a vintage frequency counter which I'll display in a, a future video. The issue with it was it wasn't working adequately so I had to service it. Being vintage from the early 1980-82 era, I thought it suffered from chip creep and needed to pull these out to detox the, uh, the sockets. So let's go ahead and try to pull one out without getting my hands or arms in the way. So you get it up. like so. Now let me uh, pardon my big arms, big hands, whatever. So we got it locked in. I know the camera can't really see it but next thing is you squeeze down really tight. Take out that movement and so you have a really good lock onto that chip. 
and then slowly just kind of rock it out like such and then generally it will stay within the tool but that's a good example as you can see in this scenario we only have one bent leg compared to all of them being bent with that chip flying out that actually brings up a, a good point now if you didn't pay attention to how the chips were seated into the socket and you didn't take photographs of it then you're going to need to know how they go back into their sockets put them in the wrong way you could fry them now if you notice in this socket or on the back side of this IC chip we have this little notch right here on the back side we have this little dot looking at the case the socket that it came out of in these sockets you need to look for this little notch right here I know the camera is not picking it up too well but there's a little horseshoe type notch in the face of this and that is where that notch goes some of the IC chips may not have that horseshoe notch and if not then you need to put that little divot there but that's a whole nother show this is focusing primarily on the tool all in all at this early stage I've only used this device this tool in this one application this frequency counter but at this point in time would I recommend the tool yes I would I'm, I'm very pleased very happy with it again I only paid three dollars and eighty five cents free ship from California you can't really go wrong with it it beats using the screwdriver it sure does beat vandalizing messing up terrorizing your IC chips so do yourself a favor go buy one of these I highly recommend it and remember, we'll drink no wine until it's time. This will conclude this episode of What Did Jack Buy? Or whatever. Catch you guys in the next video. Until then, Arrivederci.